Welcome to Arcade Couch, the best place to chill your friends and get your gaming goodness every Monday at 6 a.m. My name's Dylan Blight. Joining me on the couch this week, Kieran Marchant. Look at Dylan go! He got it right! Just first try. We didn't have to go through 20 takes or anything. It was great. Good on it's you, Dylan. A, it's not a meme if I only stuffed it up once last week. Also here, Ashley Holborn. Once I'm very excited to be here and to continue after 20, 30 takes, we can finally move on to the rest of the show. <laughs> It was one type. Uh, fuck all years. D- today <laughs> on the show, we're going to be talking about Legends of Runeterra, the new card game from Right Games. Pokemon Home finally gets more details. I have a review of Journey to the Savage Planet, and we discuss the possibility of Knights of the Old Republic getting a remake. But first, I wanted to quickly go over this story because it's, uh, of course, uh, relevant to a story we spent a bit of time talking about last year. So, following up. Uh, GamesIndustry.biz writes Blitz Chung on Hong Kong protests, protests. Even if I had a chance to go back, I would still do it. Hearthstone Pro still disappointed Blizzard, but doesn't hate the company. Ooh. Chung Blitz Chung... No, I went over this last time, didn't I? Ning Wai? Wai? Stands by his decision to uh, show support for Hong Kong protesters during a Hearthstone tournament, describing it as a must-do thing. His comments come from a new interview of People Make Games, a pr- uh, product of former Eurogame writer Chris Bratt. In the interview, Bratt travels to Hong Kong to meet with why to discuss the fallout of Blizzard's response to his political statement. Uh, back in November, uh, October, he, of course, shouted liberate Hong Kong, revolution of age, during a post-match interview. As a result, Blizzard dismissed him from the tournament, withheld his prize money, and suspended him from playing Hearthstone in a professional capacity for 12 months. In case you don't know, that's a, that's a whole year. Uh, speaking to Brad, he said that the protest wasn't planned. It was just something he decided to do in the day. And he continued saying, our major protests usually go on at the weekend. So, so when many people are protesting out there and I'm just sat here playing my tournaments, I feel bad and I want to do something. It's really hard to ignore what's going on. Uh, he basically goes on to say that he's disappointed in Blizzard's handling of this situation, but it's something they can understand. Saying, quote, to me, Blizzard is like what Hong Kong is to me right now. Maybe it's getting worse, but do I hate it? No, I don't hate it. He believes that having his uh, halving his suspension was kind of fair, but would be more happy if they changed the decision uh, on the two casters. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, I find it... I, I found it interesting that after all the things, like, he doesn't come out the door and he's not like, oh, uh, you know, like... It's probably what was a bit silly of me to do and blah, 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 blah. I kind of, I, I appreciate him more now that he's stuck to his guns uh, even after the after the fact and given this interview. I mean, and it's I, I think it's like a, a bigger deal than what most people realize because it's kind of like, it, you know, that's his job. So it's like it, it's suspended for 12 months. is like, why? Okay. Like you can't work for twelve months, basically, because of because of what he did now. So, or six months after they halved it, or whatever. So, um, interesting, but good job to him. I just wanted to follow up on that and give everyone an update. Moving on, we'll go to Apex Town, or what's Apex Maps called? I don't even remember now. Apex Isle. Apex no. Island. Isn't it like the frontier know. or something to do with the something frontier like, or something no, like that? No, that was like the second one. They've changed it. I don't know what the new one's called, but they're changing it again. Trouble you know, so in world. Paradise. Paradise Town. That's one that's what locational they city. The underground. So, <laughs> over the past week, uh, I've been loving what Respawn has been doing as they've teased towards uh, season four of Apex because they first put out this twenty-minute video, and it, over the twenty-minute video, they they don't fully explain what season four is going to have. Um, when it kicks off, but they do show the first picture of what we thought was going to be the next champion at the time called Forge. They talk a little bit about his backstory, uh, what it was like making him, tease what his abilities are going to be like, all these sorts of things. They then go on in the video to talk about ranked and all these other things. And like, it's, you know, you, there's, there's no way you think anything from this stream is trolly at all. And then a couple of days later, they put up this animated video called Stories from the Outlands where Forge, the character, is being interviewed and he's, like, talking shit, you know, saying how he's going to go in and wreck crap on all the rest of the champions. And then this, the lights start flickering off and on and then this other character called Revenant, which people uh, has been teased in the game since season two, shows up and just kills him from behind. And then if he went into the game following that video being released, you could actually find Forge's death box on the ground where the interview was taking place and if you picked it up you got a um exclusive charm uh, charm 
yeah, that you could put on your guns and whatever else. But I gotta say, I love this shit. This is great. This is like good community interaction, like building your characters, building the story of Apex, whatever else. Because I, I feel like when Apex came out the door, obviously they were like hero shooter. Everyone starts making the Overwatch things, blah, 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 you know, that sort of stuff. And all of the heroes had their own like unique traits and they'll they tease little, little bits of the story and their background and all these sorts of things. And it kind of helped Apex because of course it was built on the Titanfall universe so they could like... You, you could play into things of like, well, the Titanfall universe is like outside this place because this is like a, a, a game of it. It's like the Hunger Games happening and the rest is like the Titanfall universe outside what's happening. Um, but stuff like this, this is what's going to help get more people interested in, I guess, the characters as characters and like the story and like lore of the Apex universe, mm. I guess. But yeah, I, 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 really, I'm, I really liked it. Ash, what did you think of Forge and then Forge getting killed and... <laughs> <laughs> Revenant I being mean, a champion position. It's interesting that they decided to put so much effort into pushing Forge and then just to kill him off potentially. Unless um, they bring him back. Unless yeah. they bring him back. Because like I said, I think in game we were playing the other day, you know, these characters, they die all the time. You can go back anytime. They seem to get revived constantly. No, Multiple that, that, of these characters get killed every single game, so I, I don't think I don't think I don't, so. I, Not when it's getting killed in that kind of way. No, no, no. You, you, strip, you gotta strip the game away from the. Because technically, in theory, the way I see these kinds of games is that it's an alternate universe where that instance is taking part, like it's taking that inside its own universe. Yeah. And then, oh, no, 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 no. Even though there's multiples of the same character, and the, you just don't think too much into it. Yeah. I will say that um, Apex does a really good job of taking note of what other developers do really well and taking note of what players and fan bases connect with and react to, but then also putting their own spin on it and making it their own instead of just being a direct copy. Like I've always, I think at the end of last year, I, I was very uh, complimentative of Epic and their Fortnite events because I think... Their Fortnite events are really cool. And I, mm -hmm. I, I really like that use of storytelling and, and change in the game is actually done in game in a way that players can interact with and be a well, part hold of. Hold on. I, I don't know if Fortnite has any storytelling. They have events. <laughs> so it's narrative. I think not. Like, oh, the bus driver had a kid. Whoa. Not, <laughs> not like, not in that, but like environmental storytelling where they yeah. use stuff changes for their map, the and, map they give and things. The map yeah. changes constantly. Yeah. Whereas and this is actual characters. Yeah. Yes, mm. exactly. And and I think it's really nice that they have gone and Respawn have gone and actually altered this and done this in their own way and brought in... And I think the humor from Apex is very reminiscent of Borderlands humor in many ways and very... Um, not to the... Not like cranked up on 100. It's like Borderlands, if you, like, you know, just took it off sugar for a couple hours and it kind of calmed down a bit. And had a sit down and was nice and relaxed, but still kind of funny. That's that's Apex. Um, so I'm really, I think I'm really looking forward to the next season and playing more Apex next season because this and playing with you guys and and the new season and yeah, it's gonna be gonna be fun. Okay. Yeah. So also for the next season, they're they're doing two maps. So for the first six weeks, it's going to be the current map with whatever environmental Voltage. changes. Yeah. But th there's going to be some changes to it. They've said that much for whatever happens. Um, and then after six weeks, they're returning to the original map. But I would presume that map will also obviously have uh, environmental changes to it. But it'll be back to the original map, yeah. So you're going to have these two maps to go across, not just the one. Whereas all of this season, I think, season three was all on... It's all on the party boat map and stuff. The party boat map, yeah, that's the one. Mm. <laughs> that's exactly the one. I like it. Uh, all right, so we got more details about Pokemon Home. Finally, uh, over at Nintendo Life, they've got it all down here. The Pokemon, Co Pokemon Company has released a new wave of information for Pokemon Home, the upcoming cloud-based service which helps players trade and store their favorite Pokemon across a number of games. The service will uh, allow your, to, you to use your Nintendo account on both Nintendo Switch and mobile. You'll be able to access the game using Pokemon boxes on both versions of the app. As expected, you'll be able to move Pokemon between compatible games, but you'll also be able to trade Pokemon on the go, and there are two different pricing plans available. The Switch version of Pokemon Home supports connectivity with Pokemon Sword and Shield and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Support for, support for Pokemon Go is coming in the future. 
so then they've got this diagram here showing how it's all going to work. Uh, notice how you can't send a Pokemon back to Let's Go once they've been sent to home, however. So it's like that, that's only a one-way direction. Um, the mobile version of Pokemon Home can be used in other ways too. Wonderbox lets you trade with people around the world, even when you're not using the app. The GTS lets you specify which Pokemon you want to trade and which Pokemon you want to receive. Matching with another player who meets the criteria, Room Trade lets you create a room and trade Pokemon among your friends who join. And Friend Trade allows you to trade with Pokemon uh, with your Pokemon with other users who you've become friends with in the app. Pokemon Home will be available on a free plan or a premium plan. The premium plan, these prices are American, obviously, so just double them, I guess. The premium plan will be $2.99 for a 30-day subscription. The $4.99 for a 90-day subscription or $15.99 for an annual subscription. And the differences are basically... Uh, so, moving Pokemon from Pokemon Bank on basic is unavailable so that's the old service so you have to pay to move them all over which is a bit weird uh number of pokemon that can be deposited on basics only 30 whereas premium gets you six thousand. number of pokemon so you're only allowed 30 in your home bank. is what yeah in the uh, deposited like keeping keeping in the app in the home cloud so that when you're out and about you can then open up the app on your phone and just do trades of people you meet there or suddenly want to do online oh, okay. or whatever else so uh that's it you could always just you could always upload some from your games to there and then trade that way or what you know what i mean but you can't just bank a heap yeah uh number of pokemon that can be placed in the wonder box at once three pokemon basic 10 premium number of pokemon that can be placed in the gts at once one pokemon basic three pokemon on premium room trade you can participate in under basic and premium but you participate and host uh, and judge function are unavailable on basic and available on premium. I don't know what the fuck judge function is. Uh, finally, it has been revealed that Pokemon will be registered to the national decks. There is that magic word. When you deposit them in the boxes in Pokemon Home, Mega Evolutions and Gigamax forms will be registered separately as well. Pokemon Home will be available from February 2020, although there's no specific release date. Yep. Uh, so basically, to boil it down, uh, to help everyone understand what people are angry about and not angry about um it costs money everything everything <laughs> everything kind of sounded like something that would viably make people angry um it's interesting they've gone to subscription service it reminds me a lot of disconnected but it reminds me a lot of D, &D beyond where D, D beyond you have the basic user can make something like that was six. disconnected not disconnected no disconnected is in not a direct link, but oh, as like, their mirror. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I hope not. They just took money out of my bank account. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but the base user in DD Beyond could only have, I think it's something like six or ten characters made. Whereas if you pay for it, you get unlimited characters you can make on the website, and mm -hmm. just what you can access in the site is just kind of leveled off. Um, I think it sounds really. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm really a fan of this too much. I I think as a service, it's not at that expensive for a year. And I think of I think if this was free, you'd be like, where the fuck? How they afford this? Thirty bucks. Right. Thirty Is bucks this, Australian for a year. I mean, Is, it might be only like twenty. It might be like twenty four ninety nine. No, it's not, it's not exactly. They're not gonna. They no. It it's normally other. it's normally like more than just the exchange rate, and the Australian dollar fucking sucks right now. Well, so when you consider that the Nintendo Switch Online subscription is twenty nine ninety five a year, mm. that seems high. <laughs> for a surface that lets you move premium, Pokemon around for premium, most normal Pokemon players aren't going to need or want this beyond basic. But services. the choice is the basic service is only thirty, right? To store in there, yeah, yeah. Is Isn't the lot? point of this to store all the Pokemon you've caught in all the games so you have this no, national well, dex? No, Isn't well, that the point need, of this? No, no, no. So you can trade them in, it triggers them into the national dex, and then you can get rid of them. Where? Where can you get rid of them? Trade them what back happens? to your game. What game? Pokemon Sword Shield. That sounds like really annoying. Pokemon Shield. What about all the Pokemon that aren't in Pokemon Shield? I'm sure there's... I, no, well, you can't trade I them find this hard to believe, but I believe there is more than 30 Pokemon that aren't in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Well, that's, that's actually very true, Ashley. Because what do you do with the Pokemon? Because you can't trade them back into Let's Go, as they've just said. So if you trade the Pokemon from Let's Go, do you just delete them afterwards? 
Uh, no, if you trade them over from Let's Go, obviously you're aware of the fact that you can't trade them back. And then if you can't trade the, if they're ones you can't trade to Sword and Shield, then you can either just keep them in there, I guess, or trade them to Pokemon Go. This, you sound like you're trying you sound to. so not you confident. Sound so I'm not confident. Like- <laughs> I, 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 I'm not head over heels for service because I don't know if it's something I care for, obviously. Um, who but would care I, for this service to be to be, to be is, hardcore like, Pokemon? What players? is the is it that's the target audience is hardcore Pokemon players? I mean, yeah, right, yeah. surely. Like, who else would this be? I mean, for? who is desperate to trade with everybody around the world? I guess. And like, what's the point of this national dex? I guess you can't trade uh, online through Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, right? Mm. So that that's would, a, I guess that's this a, is the workaround. But is it guess. That- isn't that something that people should be mad about? Because, you know, back to the whole, it, with, like, fighting games, how they're, you know, people get fighters out and they have to pay for the extra fighters. And people always are like, if this was back in the 2000s, those would just be a part of the game from the start and I wouldn't have to pay for them. I mean, Whereas, to a certain wasn't, degree, that would be true. No, they'd release a new version of the game. That's what. Yeah, that's why there's 60, use, 70 versions of Street Fighter. That's, yeah. But isn't, like... In the last version, because I did not touch the last version of Pokemon, was there... Could you trade online in the last version of Pokemon? The current one? Like, no, 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 not Sword and Shield. Sun and Moon. One. Sun and Moon. That one. Yeah. Did we know? Yeah? yeah? So they've taken the feature out, and now they're going well, no, to... No, you can, you can still open whatever game and trade online. You just don't have all these features. you got to know the person, I guess, you know. Like this lets you do. You don't have the option. Lots of these options here. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Look, everyone's gonna freak out. Here, let me let me put boil the service down for you. Let everyone's me gonna, freak out. In everyone's peace. gonna complain. Everyone's gonna complain, and then everyone's gonna buy it anyway. There, there's the two step program. Are they though? So, there's the two step program. That's how it works. Complain, and then I'll buy it anyway. It's fine. I don't know if I don't know if this is a thing they'll all buy anyway. I think some will buy it anyway. I just don't think. Like, I think. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think I'm looking Online this- trading requires Nintendo Switch Online. So you can trade online as long as there you've you go. got. Yeah. In the same. Okay. That's fine then. I don't know. I knew it wasn't. It's a, it's a thing. But it's this like- seems. Yeah. This seems like a weird thing. Why wouldn't you just trade online your shield and sword Pokemon? Because you got Storm on here? But can't you store them in Pokemon Sword and Shield? Can it be in National Dex? Yeah, but you can't open... I but can't what's open the my... point in the National Dex? But then what if I meet someone out and about, I'm having the coffee, and I got my oh, phone? What if I go for a drink with a friend, and my other friend's there with his National Dex, <laughs> and he's really drunk, and I'm going to be like, hey, I'll hey. trade you. Let me have a look at what you've got. Oh, I'll just trade myself a Lugia, Mr. Drunk Friend, that I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> you can... <laughs> and you can have a uh, useless uh, Pokemon like You Eevee. can have a random Bulbasaur that I already have 10 I of believe I gave him a Squirtle, actually. Okay, a Squirtle. <laughs> So it was slightly better than a Bulbasaur, but not Ooh, much. No. Not much. But that, sorry, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, that was a call shot by shot reenactment of my trip to Tasmania. <laughs> presented, <laughs> presented by Kieran March and narrated by Kieran March and authorized by Ashley Hobley. Wow. That's true. What a thing. Um, so yes, so that's Pokemon. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's hard to judge. You know, everyone hates it now but everyone's always going to freak out. What I really need to do, because obviously I don't care for this enough uh, to truly like have a, a good opinion on it, I feel, because it's, you know, I'm not like hardcore. I want Pokemon home, blah, blah, blah. I need it to come out and then I need to read someone's opinion that isn't an <laughs> insane person on Twitter or in the comments. You know, like I need someone to like, I need someone to write an article somewhere when this comes out and be like, this is actually good service or like bad service or blah, blah. And I'm like, cool. Thank you for your uh, opinion here. Cause at the moment I'm like, all I do when I look on the comments for this article, everyone's just flipping their lid. Well, like, I don't trust any of you. You all just seem like you fucking freaking out right i don't know no, no, I, I isn't just don't that know. just the default setting for pokemon fans yeah and also like it's it's also like 24 months yeah ever since obviously all the sword and shield stuff leading up to release i'm like i don't trust the opinion of pokemon fans because they all just fucking freak out nowadays i'm like how do i trust them sword and shield's terrible use. game it's a good game it's fine you all brought it it's sold more than you <laughs> any of them the last couple months it's fine so yeah i don't know i don't know who trusts you who do i we'll have yeah. to wait and see 
I mean, yeah. I don't understand who's using bank, Pokemon Bank at the moment, paying five bucks a month a year. So, I don't understand who will use this service and pay fifteen bucks a year. American. Same people. They'll get over it. They'll pay their extra ten dollars. They'll get over it. Damn right. <laughs> uh, moving on. Resident Evil Eight will apparently be first person and feature wolves. Right. Press start. Uh, Biohazard classif- declassified. Sorry, is reporting several details of Resident Evil Eight. These details were taken from a playtest of the game and has been confirmed by other people in the industry. The game will apparently not be called Resident Evil Eight but will be the next mainline game in the Resident Evil series. The biggest point of the game will be that it will continue the first-person nature of Resident Evil 7. It'll start in a village leading up to a castle. The environments will take place in a rural, snowy part of Europe. Here are the other details that were part of the leak. Ethan will be returning as a playable character. It's fucking insane. Resident Evil 8 was tested last year. It will not be called Resident Evil 8, but will have a clever title. The game will be in first person. Fate of the Resident Evil. No, please. The game uh, gameplay starts in the village, the empty castle, the environments, blah, 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 blah. Regular zombies will be appearing instead of the molded from RE7, so you get back to the, the good old shit. There is a persistent shadowy female enemy that will follow you but will dissipate if shot. Ooh, ghosts. Mrs. X. Ghosts. There are also wolf-like creatures that will attack the player in certain areas. Chris Redfield will also be returning in some capacity because, spoilers, um, Chris He's shows up the at DLC. the end. Of, yeah, well, he shows up right at the end, doesn't he? He shows up at the end and you play yeah, as him the DLC. the DLC that came out. Yeah, so there you go. So it's a werewolf zombie mashup. Oh. It's like, man, it's, well, you know, there was the one of the other, like I think it was Resident Evil Five that was like zombie hentai mashup. So it's a whole thing. That was my first Resident Evil game. Was it really Resi Five? Five. Mm, it was alright. Did you play through it co-op or did you play through it co-op, co-op completely? Co-op. co-op. Co-op's a good so game. That's why everyone shits on it and they're like, "It's horrible Resident Evil game." I'm like, "It's a bad single player Resident Evil game. It's a possibly. great co-op game. Yeah, it's I've a really good co-op game. Player. I wouldn't play it single. I yeah. would not play it single. Um, uh, it's not as bad as Resident Evil Six, so Six was. I didn't play Six. Six was a big yikes. Didn't even bother. Um, you came for this? Uh, I am. I think it's a really smart decision to have do what they're doing at the minute with the remakes and going back to the changing up the style to go back to that third person style. But then for the current generation of the games, stick with that first person viewpoint Mm. and continue that on. I think it does a great job at um, differentiating the two different segments of the Resident Evil community at the moment mm. uh, it does a really good job of making one feel super fresh and one harnesses that nostalgic feeling at the same time um i think it's interesting that ethan's back it's, it, it just makes me wonder if ethan's like survived that one place and now i'm a crime fighting yep. dude that turns up at random places again maybe trespasses i mean isn't that the story of basically every character uh, no, Liam I was a normal is. cop. Now I've bumped into zombies. Leon now Kennedy I'm a zombie not a fighting cop. Anything, you know? He was America's sweetheart <laughs> the, the longest time. My point stands. He was just a normal cop, and now well, he, and then he was like, "Oh, go save the president's daughter." <laughs> he's the man. He is like the godfather. No, um, I really like the setting. I like the setting going back to a, a snowy European setting. Um, I don't know. The castle like and everything th- makes it sound like four to me. <laughs> it sounds a lot like, as soon as I heard European, I was like, oh, so it's going to remind me of number four a lot more yeah. than anything else. Um, and the only, what, the only bit that I'm like, okay, let's see how that goes will be this shadowy female ghostly figure. It just sounds because like ghost. But it's like, I mean, don't know what but it is like. it like, okay, are you doing a Mr. X thing? Even sounds though- like it. Even though in the Resident Evil 7, you did technically have that Mr. X vibe still with each area. You had like a different family member um, messing with you for that entire area. Um, so I guess it's not something they've ever gone away from. Um, but I'm looking, I'm interested and I'm looking forward to it because I think the first person viewpoint, I think, has been a very heavy thing since PT. I think PT showed and displayed how horror could be really well done. Mm. That's that why that I think they changed. Viewpoint. Yeah, I think that exactly. That's I not well, not just PT, but all, it's just like all the like popular ways horror games are done these days. It's all first person, like Outlasts, and yeah. then PT. Obviously, it was massive, so it's like yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I think it's gonna be really great. Ashley, what are you gonna be day one with us? Uh, uh, line up for the PAX uh, uh, demo or no? In the Might trenches, skip it. or is Buddy gonna have to drag you along again? Yeah, 
Yeah, probably the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is not up my alley, so you know. <laughs> you know? Uh, okay, so I want to talk about Journey to the Savage Planet. Um, played it for the review. Uh, got a review code, so heads up for that one. A, it's a weird game. Obviously, this was originally revealed at the Game Awards. What have it been? 2018, right? Yeah. Mm. Yes, 2018. Um, right. I gave it an 8. Uh, you can read Ooh. my full review, ExplosionNetwork.com. It is... Honestly, I, I feel like by the end of the year, I mean, we're only in January, but I, 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 I do feel like it, it, for people who are playing this game this week, uh, people who are picking it up, other reviewers, what have you, people that managed to get to it by the end of the year, I, I reckon this will make a lot of people's lists of like surprise uh, things they like so much, you know, mm -hmm. because it's, I went into it after watching those trailers and the reveal, and I was expecting more of a like No Man's Sky thing because in the trailers and the description it's like you're on this plot you go to this random planet and you, you you pick your avatar or whatever and everything was like oh you gotta go around and scan stuff and like get information about planets and whatever and i thought there'd be a little bit of combat but you know i thought mostly it was going to be like exploration and scanning stuff and whatever else this game to me most reminded me of uh ps2 era platformy type mascot stuff um, and I have seen oh. other reviewers compare it to like Metroid games, which is the two, which also makes a lot of sense to me because it has, it is a lot of exploration. You are encouraged to scan stuff to get like data on them, like plants and wildlife and animals and critters or whatever else, but it has a lot more combat than I thought it would. Like there's constantly critters to fight. Some who won't attack you unless you attack them first. Others that are, will just straight up headbutt you and kill you pretty fast if you don't fight back. Um, the further you get into the game, exploring this planet, uh, the more bigger creatures you'll run into. Uh, there are also boss fights. And I mean like kind of old school feeling boss fights. Like for example, the first one is you kind of climb up to the top of this thing and then like come up with a health bar at the bottom. I'm like, oh fuck, like boss fight, I guess. Like, But you're on top of like six floating pads and it's this giant toad monster. And of course, you got to shoot it or whenever you can. But then its attacks would like let out stuff on these pads. So then you're kind of jumping across the ones that are being targeted, trying to make it to one that isn't being targeted, get your pot shots in. Then he'll do like a big tongue attack. You have to jump to the pad that he's not attacking. Like it all was like feeling old school game designy to me where I'm like dodging mm -hmm. and jumping across things. Felt like I was playing Crash Bandicoot or some shit. Um, and the game has a lot of uh, platforming to uh, either make it through the main storyline, but then also just to find all lots of secrets. There is like a hundred plus collectibles in this game to get to uh, across the, the thing. And then as you progress the game, you're constantly getting upgrades. Like you start and you don't even have double jump. It's like, oh, the first thing I need to do is like scan enough stuff. So my research AI thing back on my ship learns how to create double jump for me. Then I kill some of these random critters around the island that are very easy to kill, including the puffer bird thing, which looks really cute. But then you kill them anyway and you feel terribly about it. And there's this other chicken character that literally just screams constantly. It doesn't attack you, it just screams. And by screams, I mean, it's like, Aah! like that is a noise it makes just constantly. I'm like, the fuck is this game? It's weird. It just doesn't stop making this thing. And, th and they drop elements and then you can use those to craft things and you craft yourself a double jump upgrade. You eventually, if you get further into the game, you're crafting thing, you're crafting upgrades to your suit that let you like grind across certain plant wildlife, a grapple hook thing, you know, like it's all, it, it makes your uh, exploration and the way you're flying around this planet a lot more faster and fluent and what have you. Um, there's not much of a story, obviously. Okay. <laughs> it's just kind of like the, the game starts, you're like, explore, find a way, find out what's happening here. You very quickly learn there's this giant tower in the middle of the, the, the planet. And it's like, okay, that's your goal. Find out what's there. Uh, but the, what you do get for the story is told through these live action videos from the president of the uh, company you're working for. What the fuck are they called? I've got it here somewhere. Uh, Kindred Aespr Aerospace, right? They're the, the company that sent you there, the, like the space program or whatever. And yeah, they, every, every time you go back to your ship, uh, if you transport back there to do upgrades, because there's like teleporter pads around the island, or if you die, and when you die, your ship just makes a clone of you and sticks your memories in it, which is pretty normal, apparently. That's a that's a cool thing that happens. Uh, you'll see these videos playing, and they are 
along with the adverts that play after them because your ship will just start playing advertisements for random fake shit. They all reminded me of Adult Swim, late night, wacky shit. Like, uh, you, you know that too many cooks in the kitchen type weirdness? Yep. If anyone's seen that? That's what the humor of this game reminded me of. Just wacky nonsense. Like, there's an advertisement that plays. It's like, here, come to this place and have meals for vegans. And it's not meals for vegans. It's uh, a drink of them putting vegans into a blender. And then it's like, but it's like old-timey adverts. They're like, yeah, let's come drink. Like, it's really weird. <laughs> like, and on, But several of them were quite funny and made me laugh out loud and this game in general i would say is quite uh funny and i think it also helps with my general problem going into it because which was like oh just another game that's like very underplaying the like colonization of the uh, uh, of, a, of a planet like that's a kind of too done old it's very close to the outer worlds like it's very close to yeah but the outer like world is like playing the other worlds is like, yeah, okay, we've colonized this certain section and like it's being ruled over or whatever else. This is the whole thing of like, you've been sent here by people on earth to find a better planet so people on earth can move to it. And, but I think the reason they get it, which is messed up because that all of that in general, I mean, this is a whole subject to dive into, but what for a lot of these space games, when you, when you dial it back, it's like, it's no different than Europeans invading Australia and just colonizing yeah, the place and whatever else like it's that but you're supposed to not think about it because you're like but space things and shiny things or what you know this game because i was thinking about that as soon as i started i'm like this is a bit weird but to me it felt like parody because of how silly the humor was and the jokes about it and how ridiculous they make the aerospace company be because you see these videos with the president and the president's just a fucking whacking nut job type thing so it very much um, in the, in my review, I, I I said at some stage, I'm like, it's called Journey to a Savage Planet, but the most savage, and there are giant monsters and bosses or whatever, but by the end, end of the game, I felt like the most savage thing on the planet was me, who, as soon as I arrived, I'm like, cute chicken things, better kill them so I can get some materials from them, you know, like, <laughs> like why, why can't I pet them <laughs> or something like that? So, uh, yeah, there's a different sort of angle for it, but, uh, and then also, last thing I'll kind of say about it is that it can be speed run. Uh, sped run uh, one of the trophies for the game is called see you at gdc or something like that uh no oh, that's really cool uh, yeah, uh, or games. gdq gdq thank you yeah yeah gdq it's, yeah one of the trophies is called see you at gdq uh and it's like beat the game under four hours so you can beat the game under four hours easy i beat it between five to six hours kind of leisurely taking my time but also being like i want to get here so i can finish it and write the review obviously um and then i put another five hours after finishing it so i was probably up to like 10 hours trying to find all the collectibles i haven't even found them all yet so I would say to a hundred percent it, you're looking between 10 to 20 hours. I, I would guess like, I, I don't know, like maybe 15 ish, like even a hundred percent in it, it's still not going to take you like hundreds of hours, like 15, 20 hours, probably or something like that. But the main core game is rather short, but, and, and that's to me because the main aspect of the game is actually exploration and finding the collectibles and doing all that stuff. And just the main route of like, object A to object B, boss fight, object A to object B, boss fight is like very short on purpose. Yeah. But overall, I, I would say it's, it was surprisingly good. And considering there's not much out at the moment, if anyone's like at home, they're like, fuck, you're like, where's a new game for this year that I can play? That's good. Like I would say that of Journey to Savage Planet is uh, quite fun. And as I just said, quite short. And if you're just looking for like a collectible fix, especially, uh, you know, Banjo Kazooie or whatever else, something of a comparison I used in my review. It's like these games where you get that feeling of just going around a collectible thing and collecting things. This game is going to 100% hit that uh, collectible urge if you if that's what you have it because it's basically collectible the fucking game. Um, and the, the visually, the planet and the design and everything's quite good. Like you start and it's like very normal, grass is green or whatever. If you, you start getting up to different areas and it's like icy stuff and you, you're kind of in the sky and bits of the planet, it's like floating. Like it, it's... It's interesting to look at and play. So, yeah. Journey to the Savage Planet. There's my review. Go read more. Mm. ExplosionNetwork.com. Anyone interested in this one? After, um, Is it first person or third? It's FPS. And FPS? Well, it's not. Well, Did I guess you, there is some shooting. Did you mention the dog? Oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, so when you pick your, um, when you pick your avatar at start, different variations of like ethnicities and whatever else to pick from. Um, but one of them was just a picture of a dog. 
And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm picking the dog because that's the weirdest option here. But then as soon as I picked the dog and I started playing the game for a bit, I realized that it didn't just randomly... Because I'm like, what difference does this make? First person, when am I going to see my face? I'm in a fucking space helmet. But it does make a difference because I'm a dog. So underneath, I sound like a dog when running and I sound like a dog when jumping. So I, I let out <laughs> bark noises and lots of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is a part of the game. <laughs> Um, and what, what did you play it on? Did you play it on PC? Uh, oh, PS, PS4, I got my PS4? thing. But it's okay. it's on PS4, it's on Xbox, and it's on PC, although you have to go via the old, dirty, epic game store. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, oh, no. Not one of those things. Can't have it on Steam. Oh, no. More than one launcher. Get the hell out of here. Uh, all right, so journey to the Savage Planet. So the other game I've been playing this week, and uh, all of us have been playing, but I would... Uh, somewhat say that me and Kieran have been playing the most of is Legends of Rune Terra, which is the League of Legends card game that was in closed beta since October, I believe, and now has gone into this sort of like open openish beta. Beta, although that they say they're still like not doling out codes to everyone who asks, but I'm like, I was just like I googled <laughs> it and was like, hey, yeah. can I sign up for this? And they're like, and they're like, yeah, just put your league creds yeah. to log in here. And I'm like, cool, thanks. Yeah, so and I, they're I, like, I yeah, know. go download it. I'm pretty sure it's just open beta now. Let's that, that's how it is. Uh, so that started last week. Um, I've played a fair bit of it. Kieran's played a fair bit of it. I found it hilarious how this had been out for a couple of days, and it wasn't until I messaged Kieran. I'm like, hey, you might want to play this before AC next week. And he's like, I okay, legit, I'll check I it out, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally had not actually like I I think I'd heard of it in passing and I think I may have seen it on my Discord as like I think you were playing it is where I saw it <laughs> and I was like oh I have no idea what that is blah 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 keep it and then you mentioned it was the league card game and I was like oh okay sure it's league it's got some cool characters I'll check it out for AC it'll be something I can just try out it's free anyway um and then. I really like this card game. You were like, playing it right before we started recording. I was playing it before we started recording today because... Um, you had to wait a good 20, 30 minutes for getting off in this game. <laughs> um, I just think it does something that, um, that I think is what card like tabletop card game players really want in in this kind of game um i think hearthstone is a really good one is a really good card game for learning the basics of how to play a tcg and everything for especially a digital one but it's missing a lot of the aspects of games like magic the gathering that i really enjoy that, that you know the the interplay of playing cards in your opponent's turn and doing things to stop their turn. Because in Hearthstone, it's very much when it's their turn, it's their turn. You can't really do anything. It's kind of hands off the keyboard. You're not playing anything to kind of stop things. Um, so there's a lot of more complexity to Legends. And you probably say, Kieran, if you like that, why don't you just play Magic the Gathering Arena? And um, there was something about either the UI or how Magic the Gathering Arena ran that I just thought was really clunky and really annoying to use. Whereas I think uh, Runeterra is very, uh, it's very streamlined in how it works. And I really like its inbuilt systems for deck building. It's got um, a great method of being able to stop players from being able just to buy decks. Um, I, now, think, I, I, think wanna, I wanna bump in the guy with this quick because I think that's an important thing when comparing to Magic uh, Gathering Arena. Right, because obviously, I in case anyone listening doesn't know, I used to play a lot of physical Magic, and then um, okay. I used yeah. to play a lot of MTGO as well. And then I've, I've played my share of uh, Arena since it was in beta, and then the full release. And I think the beta was good. The full release, I was quite happy with a lot of stuff that came out of the big update. And I, when it the week it came out, a couple months ago, whenever it was late last year, I was like, "This is very good." But the problem with it still is that I feel like I have to spend a lot of money unless I'm just doing drafts. And I had no problem playing drafts. I, I like drafting, that's fun. But I'm like, if I wanted to make any actual decks, I'm going to have to spend a lot of money. The big thing with Legends of Ruterra, and I hope they never change this because I think it's like kind of like putting a, a safety barrier on people who are addicts or some shit, is that even if you've got all the money to spend in the world and you're, you're happy to just drop $1,000, buy all the best decks, just go hand, beat up everyone, you can't. It... The, you could you could spend a hundred dollars of in-game currency you could be like here's my paypal account here's a hundred dollars you get uh a hundred dollars worth of in-game currency into your account you can do that but you'll have nothing really to spend it on because you can't buy single cards 
which is good. What you can buy are the uh, wild cards. You can buy like, wild cards, which is like you're buying a one common card, and then you, whenever you've decided this is the common card I want, you, you expend your common your wild card for that card. Yeah, um, but, and but then all- it's like you're restricted because. Per week, you can only buy X amount of those cards. So for like the common wild card thing, you can buy six a week. For the uncommon one, I think it's like I think, close no, to the same. I think it's a bit more. I think it's 10 for common because I think Ten, champion, probably 10, six champions, or something. Th- champions, champions three. It's three. So the champion is yes. like the very best card. And you can only buy three of them. You may buy three a week. So it's like, even if you drop a hundred dollars, you'll literally have nothing to spend it on, which is kind of good. So the game encourages you to just play and, and, and it, unlock via its in-game unlocks and it gives you so much options of what you're after to unlocks because the game has these factions that you play as there are six factions in total is it six yep. or is it eight six six there's six factions in total and you get to choose where your xp is going to is your which faction your xp is going to at that time and you will then start unlocking booster packs and chests and items from that faction only. And you can change that at any time. You're not just locked into one. You can all of a sudden have an idea for a deck for Demacia. So you're like, I'll jump over to Demacia timeline. You're still gaining, you know, you've and that uh, progress stays there. It doesn't disappear. You can swap and change all you like, um, which I think it's really good. Like, even stuff like... Um, when I was looking, because I built a deck today for really quickly, and even stuff like using the in-game currency, the shards, which you get um, just kind of passively, and then also if you have uh, got it, if you've got like a duplicate card for something, it'll just give it'll you some give of those shards, instead. Yeah. Give you shards instead, and the shards are actually realistically usable to buy cards yep. to get cards that you need, which I think is really good um, and really exciting. Yeah. Um, so I've probably played. I don't know. I don't even know if I've got thing open to tell me. Does if I open up thing, will it tell me like? God won't tell you. Why not? I added it. No, because it's. Did you add it? I added it, so it might tell me now. Did you? It says I've I've played four hours. Only four hours, really? Yeah, well, that might be wrong. That that sounds like because I've played more than four hours. That one's maybe it doesn't count waiting. (laughs) Maybe Maybe that's the point where it's only counting in-game time. But, Possibly, yeah. I don't know. And I think it also also um, is a minor point. It has some of the best um, uh, training tutorials that I've seen in a card game, like the the bot tutorials that it runs you through when you first log in. There's it's, a few of them. <laughs> there's a lot, and I so I think it took me like an hour to do all of them, an hour and a bit. Um, and I I had really fun, and it taught, teaches you really well. Um, so it's yeah, got so a I, lot of mechanics. I and I. I honestly didn't feel like I needed to finish them, but I did because I was just like, knock them out of the way, get my fun. XP, um, get all my unlocks here, miss, mm-hmm. uh, make sure I know any missing mechanics. But I would say that as someone who uh, knows magic, that this game was quite easy to pick up because it runs on a similar sort of system where it's like you, you, your creature cards basically have, or your, your, your main fiend cards, whatever the fuck they're called, um, they have like attack, toughness, that's what happens if you block an attack, blah, 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 blah. There are spells. Some you can only cast during your turn. Others you can cast basically as instance in response to other stuff or in the enemy's turn, what have you. Like a lot of the terms and terminology overruns basically trample from magic. You know, uh, there's a quick quick attack, which is basically first strike from magic. A lot of the abilities just uh, tra- transferred over from magic and made a lot of sense to me. Uh, very easily. The only, the only other thing is that the, the kind of thing that makes this unique is that it doesn't have, like, magic obviously has a, you take a turn, then I take a turn and you take a turn, I take a turn. This game has this whole, like, swing back turn action, but then it, only one person has the ability to attack and the the attack coin will flip backwards and uh, forwards, but then each person gets to, to make actions and then once both people pass, then the attack coin will switch over to the other player. Although there are some abilities and cards that let you get an attack coin Those are the, that's, in your opponent's That was the turn. hardest thing for me to get around was when other people were getting attack coins. I was like, okay, yeah. this, is fucking, this is nutty. I will say they do a fantastic job of taking advantage of the League of Legends champion roster and mm. making some really interesting and individual cards for each one. Um, I think there's no... So far, I haven't seen 
a champion card and been like, oh, that's kind of lame. Like, I think the base, like the one that I'm like, ah, eh, that's very standard is Darius. Everybody else, I'm like, okay, that's a really cool mechanic that you've got to use because they level up if you do like an, uh, an objective in game and everything. And, yeah. um, I think it's a really fun game to pick up. And I think if anybody wants to pick it up, I, I would suggest picking up now so you're not, you know, left behind or the like if, for instance the hardest thing i ever do is if i ever want to go back to playing hearthstone it's like well you've missed like three sets of cards so mm. learn everything yeah. and everything that you previously knew is all gone so there's you're, no going back there's no going <laughs> back so it's like you may as well play this t- this tcg like fresh play it fresh where everybody else is learning it you've got the opportunity to play it while the majority of the like the community is still learning the game and working it out. You haven't got this weird balance of like really, really good Everyone's players. Just gonna yet. smash you as soon as you come in. <laughs> um, the, everybody's making mistakes with the mechanics. I mm-hmm. think it's it's a great time to jump in, and, and it's really fun. Now, Ash, how are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I feel like I put maybe a couple hours in. Mm-hmm. I did all the tutorials and everything, and then banked up enough to do the trials or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah the draft a couple thing. of times. The draft, yeah. which was which draft. is fantastic that it's a draft with two sections, with two phases. Yeah. So if you yeah. fuck up your first draft, it's like, yeah, hey, you've got a second one. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it just didn't just super grab me. I mean, it's fine. I think it's just kind of slow. That's the only thing that... Obviously, with this the ability to do things during your opponent's turn, that just slows everything down because it's twice as many moves every turn. You know what I mean? So you've got to wait... You play a spell card. You got to wait to see if they react to them playing your spell card. Then you play a champion. I, I think this is a thing where yeah, to, I think this is a thing where it's like not worried me from, from coming from Magic. Where yeah, yeah, you haven't got you haven't got a fucking turn that is like somebody is playing the game by themselves because they're like right. I play mm. this card which triggers this, which triggers this, which triggers this. You trigger that, so I do this, and like they're literally. They play the game by themselves for ten minutes, and you're like, "All right, yeah. okay, this is what this game is." I think, I think, or I, just in general, knowing you're playing a control player and you pluck any yeah. spell you cast, you're like, "Does it resolve?" Mm, and then they they <laughs> spend they spend a good minute thinking about it. You don't know if they have a counter spell or they're just t- just fucking with you, pretending they're fucking with you, and then like it resolves, and you're like, "Oh, am I scared or am I not?" Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like my um like. The sl- uh, the, I I don't feel like the game's slow. I feel like it obviously I, depends on the matchups and who you're playing because there's like super aggressive decks, there's super mid range decks, there's like combo decks, there's fucking Teemo decks. I also think, <laughs> are you only playing with the default decks? I think so. Yeah. At the minute, all the default decks are super slow. As yeah, I yeah. was, because I played through each of them with Dylan last night on stream over at twitchtv slash Explosion Network. There's the plug. Um, <laughs> um, I was I played through each of them and they were all really clunky. As yeah. I would say, none of them fast. You can, you can build like an aggro as, de- as fuck. Yeah, deck that's there like, is definitely you kill your opponent aggro. like five turns or less, or you're probably just going to lose because <laughs> you run out of steam. And that's like the equivalent of like red burn from magic or something. So it's like yeah, it's, um, there there are there are ways to go. I think it doesn't help that I've been playing battlegrounds on. Hearthstone, which is like mm-hmm. similar to a TCG, but then it's also really fast each turn. Also, it so auto plays so. the TCG for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you just you set the it. cards up and let things happen. Yeah, I I, I don't want to spend it forever on this because I feel like we're make here and are really liking it, so we could just gush on it. We could talk for fucking hours on could, just this yeah, topic, could, but you could just go rewatch our stream. Look forward to Twitch the legends of, <laughs> legends of Rune Terra review discussion yeah sure <laughs> um oh actually um <laughs> um also so i uh, i i i tried getting into half stone when that came out i'd never liked it i never got into it uh when half stone it released it, it came out when i was still hanging around my local guff and i was in there weekly playing magic and everyone was like oh half stone half stone like blah blah i'm like i don't like it it's like too that, that, that was kind of that was too slow for me and but and i think i found that slow because i'm like the stuff Kieran's saying, I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I just play stuff. They, yeah, they I play stuff, and then and I kind of have to wait fucking, until that. This is stuff. boring. Like, where I, I found it, I'm like, where's the strategy? Like, how how do I like counter people's shit and like kill it and the combo off here? Do something. That's you know, the, like, that's my biggest pet peeve with Hearthstone is that counter spell is a secret, 
and it's like you don't get to choose what you're countering. The other player can trigger it early. And That's it's fucking like, stupid. You're like removing half of the fun of counter spell because yeah. somebody plays a spell and you're supposed to sit there for two minutes go, do, do I play this now or yes. is this a bait? Yes. And they're trying to play a better spell yeah. after this. They're just yeah. trying to fuck with me. So in in I ha- uh, you can, there is a proper counter spell called Deny that lets you counter someone's card and you can cast a card they can deny your card. You can deny their deny. They can deny your deny. You can deny your deny and then buff your creature and then wipe the board. <laughs> like, you can do it's- actual shit in this game. It's not boring. You know, like, you can be, you can do weird reactionary shit and have That's fun just with it. There's more mechanics that are more atoned yeah, to. Yeah, it's like, I give my creature pieces. plus one, plus one. Okay, in response to that, I'm going to kill my own creature, draw two cards. They're like, okay, in response to that, I'm going to use this other card that says if a creature died, I can do three damage with this thing. And you're like, cool, well, in response to that, I'm going to fucking negate it. You know, you like- You can also do the petty <laughs> move of the, the, they try to kill your creature and you're like, no, nah, I'm going to kill my own creature first yeah. before you can kill yeah. it. Ha! It's like- Fucking up. Yeah, so I, I definitely feel like the reactionary aspects of it is why it's working for me and why I'm enjoying it so much. Um, obviously, I'd, uh, I'd like to, to, to point out some negatives, I guess. I don't think the draft's that good at the moment. Like, it wasn't super uh, involved. Like, it's uh, obviously coming from Magic Draft. It's a lot different because Magic Draft is you take one card, pass the pack, take one card, pass the pack. This is like, it appears to be like, here's like three random selections of three cards. Pick one of those three card packs. You keep that. And the first two rounds, it's like, pick your two champions and that sets your colors because the uh, decks in this, unlike magic, you can't just have all in one. You are restricted. You can only have two clans or whatever the fuck they're called. Factions. Uh, factions, thank you. Yeah, you can only have two factions in a deck. That's it, limit two factions total and then you can only play cards from those factions in it uh so then when you draft it's like pick your two factions and then just pick three things and i i, I did one draft and i'm like i don't know really how i feel about this and the rewards aren't that great like you get rewards in shards you don't get rewards in like cards i guess you know or like higher stuff and of course it's beta so it's like whatever um to compare it to the magic beta to know like what, how it kind of compares the magic betas draft wasn't very good uh it's rank mode wasn't very good either and then by the time we got to full release it had way better drafting way better visual updates all these sorts of things this game visually already looks good so we're, we're going the up there artwork is amazing in this yeah. game like, I really and then when champions that. evolve you got these great animated things and cards do animations and cards will interact and talk to one another like uh, play into the league law if you play two cards that like hate each other across the field they'll talk to one another uh little details like that so <laughs> Uh, overall, yes, it gets a solid, yes, this game is good, and if you have always wanted to get into a card game, I would say try this one, um, I think I'll put a big asterisk on that and say you do not have to know League of Legends to enjoy the game, um, it doesn't make any fucking difference, of course, if you play League of Legends, you'll enjoy some of the subtle interactions and, like, character, uh, lore type stuff, but it's the same, to me, it's no different than playing Magic and not giving two fucks about the story that comes with each new release, you know, like, here's this, this story, this Planeswalker do, you're like, I don't give any fucks, just let me play the goddamn game, it's the exact same sort of thing to me, you know, so yeah, I'd suggest checking it out, um and it's better than Hearthstone and story. There's <laughs> yeah, and and final mini point: Riot has no chill because a card levels up when he sees his wife die. Yeah, that's a thing. That's a horrible thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very <laughs> no chill. It's uh, yep. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this Knights of the Old Republic remake that's supposedly coming. Uh, well, it's rumored to be a thing that's going to happen. And then after we go over this story, I want to talk about uh, what kind of Star Wars games we're hoping for in this post. I don't know what I feel like. There's there's like the last five years. I don't know a name for it, but I think of it as like a certain like period in Isn't Star it, Wars doesn't history. Doesn't have a name. Like it has know? like a. A, like a new saga name or something where it's no, like I mean it's a uh, sequel trilogy but I, I don't just mean the movies I just mean like everything of the last five years is like in my mind the Disney something. era no well we're still in the Disney era so it's like <laughs> I just mean like the last five years are, were like the okay. the you know if it, it, it feels like a period like it feels like I can put all the bo- books comics the Skywalker saga yeah sure 
the Lock Star in. Wars rebirth period. Yeah, sure. Don't Star know. Wars rebirth period. Yeah, sure. The now dark we're in the, period. Yeah, now we're in the the good, the better period because we can stop worrying about the movies and do up stuff. Um, can we though? Yep. IGN writes, the latest rumor indicates a new Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic project is underway at EA and it looks to, quote, integrate elements from the first two games in order to bring certain things into the star- current Star Wars canon. As reported by Sinlinks, two sources claim to have knowledge on the rumored return of this beloved franchise. The first source says a remake of the 2003 classic is in development, while the second expands it said it, quote, wasn't so much a remake, but a sequel of sorts. This new project, as previously mentioned, would take elements from the first KOTOR and Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, and retool the two stories to make them fit in current canon. These rumors do fall in line with Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy's previous comments confirming that Lucasfilm is developing something Knights of the Old Republic related. There have also been rumors of a Knights of the Old Republic film, with some sources linking Game of Thrones as DB Wise and David Benioff, who are no longer creating Star Wars tr- uh, trilogy to that. Uh, it was reported last year that after the cancellation of KOTOR 3, that Obsidian always envisioned the game to be a trilogy. Trilogy. Lead writer Chris Avalon uh, from Reboot Develop also said KOTOR 3 would have been uh, about uncovering the origin stories of the Sith Lords and that they foreshadowed what Darth Revan was doing in the second game. Um, so I have a lot, I've, I've, because here's my thing of these stories. Let me boil it down this way. Anytime these rumors start about KOTOR remakes, the internet flips a read. And I understand everyone loves these games, right? These two games. Everyone's like, bring that back, remake it. You know, when Battlefront 2 comes out and it was shit at launch. I don't want to say it's shit because I think Battlefront 2 is good now. I think of it, it was shit at launch because of the, the micro and stuff. But when that happened, everyone's like, fuck this shit, just fucking make KOTOR. You know, like everyone, everyone always falls back onto KOTOR as it's like, just make that and everything will be happy. And the reason that I've always said that it's never going to happen, and but it is tackled in this article, of course, is that I'm always like, they're not just going to remake KOTOR because... Everything in Star Wars now, and a lot of people don't understand this, has to be canon. It's a rule they've set themselves. You know, like everything they do has to be canon, and it restricts them in certain terms. And it, um, and in, in, in some ways, I think it helps because it kind of like when you, it, it, as much as I didn't like Fallen Order, like Jedi Fallen Order, as much as I didn't like that, like having to stick to it being canon, then makes them not being able to do weird, crazy things by having him like bump into Luke or you know all these. Kind of, like it means that they're like, here are rules we have to follow them. Here's how we go about it. So, and the, the second they do a Knights of the Old Republic game. It's like, well, okay, well, that's not a movie now. It's not a TV series. It's a game, you know? Because if they tell this story in a game, I don't think they're just going to tell the same story in movies or TV shows. And in a lot of ways, I think a lot of people would prefer it as a TV show or movie. Isn't it a problem that doesn't it now restrict people from having choice within that game? Because there will always be a, this is how the canon story finishes like this is the canon option yeah you could make certain choices for your character but then yeah there would have to be restrictions of like certain degrees of your character creation and character storyline choices but then it's also like yeah if you get to the end it's like oh my character did this or my character did that and then they made a sequel to it they'd have to be like okay well this one was actually the canon and even (laughs) if they're then yeah even if they're then referring to it because as they you know with this rule of setting themselves that it becomes canon they they often and the rule of two um (laughs) they um what they've they've also set a precedent of having some kind of relation in other medias to this Mm -hmm. so that means that there is going to have to be a very widely and openly known uh, this is how this has actually happened. Yes, you have your version of events, but this is the canon accepted storyline. This is what we want to, to happen, um, which I don't know if that would cheapen the experience for players and fans, knowing that their choices aren't necessarily the correct ones yeah. or the, the accepted ones. Yeah. Um, but... Hey, it's part of it. Yeah, my my thing with this is always that like people uh, holler and cheer, but I'm like, you're not going to get the game you think you are because it's going to have to. It's going to be a weird mutant. It's going to be a weird like they're going to take like Kotor one and two and smush them together, and then also try and like cram new stuff in on top of it. You know, like don't even watch my hand action if you're watching the video. But it's um. It's going to be weird. And as we said, with you know, as problems with the, 
the the last uh, the rise of Skywalker is that we all thought they crammed too much into that. So it's like, okay, what are you going to do? You're not going to let the story breathe. Is it just going to be an opening section of we're going to explain at the start what happened in KOTOR one or two, and then go into the actual game, which I think is okay. Yeah, but if they if, if they acknowledge KOTOR one or two, then KOTOR one and two suddenly become canon, and they're not canon. You know, so well, not sorry, sorry. Not directly acknowledge them, but acknowledge acknowledge the story beats that they're pulling from Kotor one and two. Oh, yeah, that would as work. the canon settings for this game. Yeah, then that would work. I think that was fine. Hmm. Ash, how do you feel about Alice? I mean, I'm keen. It sounds potentially good. I mean, I just those games have a special place for me. I remember playing them decades ago. <laughs> a decade ago. Damn right, that were decades uh, ago. How many? Four, five? Yeah. I'm there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, that, <laughs> obviously that that reveal in the first game is like one of my favorite gaming moments of all time. I think um, so. It's always dicey to like what they're gonna, especially so long after and with so few people who were involved in the original mm-hmm. going back to it. Um, and then no, I guess we're like- completely disregarding the MMO as well. That's the. That, None of that matters. Well, no. the MMO isn't Knights. It's just the Old Republic, right? And it's actually got nothing to do with the Knights. It's just the setting. It's I never like, played it. It was a good. It was all right. It was pretty good. I'm it's surprised right. you never yeah. played it. It was all right. I'm surprised yeah. you never played it. I never had a My PC guild. when any of these games come out. You know. I mean, okay. it's, it's still playing. You can. We can play it. <laughs> you can play it still. We had the um when we started. We had the Not canon. my my friends and I had the guild name as the Jedi Council, and it was great. Oh, and then we sold, the cool kids. sold that name. You sold it sold for five hundred dollars, or how much? For a lot of, I think it was like five or six hundred bucks. Fucking hell! Yeah, Could have like, held out. I was like, <laughs> yeah, hold out to now. <laughs> I was like, man, what a what a. Actually, bonus. you probably got um, out when it was good. Yeah, probably. Possibly. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> um, yeah, code. I'd be interested to see what changes they make. If what changes they make to like combat and stuff, if they yeah, go like I suspect offense. that would be completely overhauled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds if like so much would change. The combat would change. The story would change. The RPG elements would change. Like, it, it, if this comes out, I guarantee it'll just be one of those things. They're like, this isn't what we wanted. I'm like, what did you expect? Honestly, what what yeah. did you people expect it was going to be? You know? Are we sure it's not just a uh, Switch port? <laughs> I mean, they can do that. They can if do they that. Wanted the, if they wanted the Switch port, they just bring the port over from the mobile game. Yeah. It's like the same thing, right? Same graphics. Just a couple of extra buttons. Yeah, a couple of extra yeah. buttons. I mean, they can yeah. do that, but I, I don't think that's what people want, obviously. They want a brand new game. It's not what like they a, want, but a that's probably remake. what they're doing. But if they port it, yeah, that's like, okay, just port it to the Switch, do what you need to do. Um, what else and do... Drop, put clues in it for the third one. third one? I don't know if that's the yeah. thing. What else do we want from, or hope, or what do you hope or think, or whatever that we're going to be getting from Star Wars over the next five years, say? Obviously, I, the first one is Jedi Fallen Order 2, or whatever the hell that's called. Mm-hmm. Whatever that is going to be. That is going to be a thing. And my thoughts for that, uh, did you ever need to actually end up finishing it? It's no. on my list of stuff to go back to. Oh, it's still, yeah. Where, how far did you end up getting at? Uh, I was about to go back to Kashyyyk for the second time, I think. So not far. You're like halfway. No, probably, probably <laughs> like a, halfway, maybe two thirds. I don't know, because I haven't yeah. finished the game, but... What, and why did you stop playing? Uh, Death Stranding. Why haven't you gone back, though? Good question. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find out. I'm like, was, just, it, what, was it the gameplay? Was it the story? Was at work? The, yeah, but all those nights just that you... Apex and... I was yeah. about to say, all the nights you're playing Apex. <laughs> I'm getting at something here. <laughs> yeah. if, he, if he sacrificed one hour of Apex time every day... He would have that game finished. <laughs> yeah. Do you actually want to finish it though? When you dig deep, do you, do you not? Yeah, I, I think I I've seen bits and pieces about like the ending and like it's different things that, that happen. Everyone like, oh. it. I mean, it'd be cool to experience it and then not be spoiled. Or well, I guess I am technically spoiled. So, or just to yeah. know, and then we can uh, I can theorize about what's going to happen in Jedi uh, dropped order. Yeah. Prison order. No, that's not actually a thing. Flat order. Flat order? Sure. I know. Um, Fallen. Yeah. Frisbee? Uh, yeah, so that's going to be a game that I, I would expect that to come uh, faster than I guess we expect. Like, you know, like uh, 
kind of like how when we talk about God of War 2, we're kind of like, okay, they've got like a lot of the bare bones system. Surely the sequel won't take as long. You know what I mean? Like they've got these characters, they've yes. got setting, yeah. they've got some of the they've got some of the combat down and whatever else. So it's like surely it wouldn't take as long uh, unless they really want to overhaul everything. And the game was a big success. So that's well, de- definitely something we're gonna see in the next couple of years. Are they gonna bring back whatever his name is? I can't remember. Stig Larson? I don't know. Stig cow? something? No, the cow. Cow. Cow? Kester? Be- oh yeah, yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. He doesn't name. die. So but do you expect them to bring him back though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like him. Okay. I don't, but people do. People like Rose of Skywalker. So what the fuck do I know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, All right. Yep. They like the game or the movie. So my opinion on Star Wars is not the. Uh, it's okay. Like Clone Wars yeah. will be seen. The common you'll, one. You'll you, ain't ma- big... you ain't mainstream anymore. No, I'm not mainstream anymore. Uh, so other than that, which I would play, but I would not be excited about. Obviously, I'm still going to put down my hopes and dreams for the vr star wars game i still yeah. have been saying that obviously for years at this point a vr you even finished if, vader vr no i've got the third episode to do but i have one of those i uh similar when you're talking about spoilers i was scroll- somehow even though this game is like obviously a lot niche i guess because of the sort of people i follow i'll scroll through twitter one day and it wasn't even anyone i followed or one of those things you know when twitter's like suggest someone to you like, like someone's somebody, tweet yeah. yeah someone's tweet there it's like all oh, these people follow them or whatever or whatever yeah it was like the yeah. spoiler to the ending of uh immortal three so then at the time i was like <sighs> you know you're just like oh, I, I, still, I still want to play it but you're just like oh that's a bit disappointing and i wish i could so it turned me off jumping straight into it anyway that's my immortal thing okay um so i want the vr i want i want the vr some sort of racing game i'll take vr pod racing at this stage honestly uh vr tie fighters yeah. vr x wings some VR shit X-wings, like that yeah. uh so, some combination of that is what i want the most um palpatine vr no dirty hall words you spend half of it like conspiring in the senate and that kind of thing and you no, have no, to no. conceive this will be no, we get, gran- dad <laughs> you have Spoilers. to we have to palpatine vr has to fill in the gap between episode six and nine and how palpatine survived because it makes no sense <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just you floating in like a tube so like <laughs> you have to like hours. swim you have to like swim your way through space like just trying to push yourself yeah wow totally yeah. would work that's horrible um, does anyone else have any other games that they think we'll see or hope to see? What I really Star want Wars. them to do, what I desperately need them to do, is first get like red tape and make this bubble around just before Phantom Menace mm-hmm. and all the way till the end of episode nine and just put this like red tape around it and be like, don't don't make anything here with small exceptions for the period of Clone Wars and the period between episode <laughs> six and episode seven. Small, small, you know, tiny little like sections you could build from. Everything else, go somewhere else. Don't include a Jedi. Just don't. Just fucking do something else with the world. Make a bounty hunter game because fucking people love bounty hunters. At the moment, the they bounty do, hun- eh? They, they love the Mandalorian, capitalize on that shit. Don't mm. make a Mandalorian game, but no. just make a game about bounty Similar. hunters and the, yeah. the underworld just and stuff like that. a bounty hunting game. Mm. You like just make travel an from RPG, planet to planet. Make an RPG and you, pick, you, you can play out, you know, your, your I'm style. Pretty sure that's build a, I always thought yeah. that's what um, Amy's game was going to be, the visceral one. Mm. Yeah, I hope, I'd hope so. I like I, I really liked the sound of that game and what that was going to be exploring. So... Um, just, just give us something other than the standard four stuff. Give us a rest from Jedi's, and or find a fun way to reference the Force in your games, like the Mandalorians done with Baby Yoda. Something new, but don't just give us a rest on Jedi's for a bit. Because I think apparently, even before uh, Respawn, when Respawn originally was like, "Hey, we want to make a Star Wars game," the Star Wars Lucas films came and were like, "No Jedi." Yeah, and respawn had to kind of persuade them to let them do a Jedi game. They went, so, "Hey, look at this guy. He's not a Jedi." Well, as soon as you make a Jedi <laughs> game, and still do have Jedi <laughs> Force powers. And uh, as soon as you do a Jedi game, it was, a, it was when they announced that game. I was straight away intrigued how they were going to do it because I'm like, everything's canon now. So the second you have a character that's jumping around and has ridiculous powers, like in Force Unleashed, it's like, mm, okay, how did nobody <laughs> know about that's, this? 
Yeah. Especially when there's periods of time now where we actually have reference where, you know, where it's only been so long after the Jedi are around and people are like, what the, like, they're calling Jedi, like, sorcerers and stuff. And they're like, what the fuck is that shit? Like, they have no idea about Jedi and their strength or anything because, you know, Palpatine did his best to uh, take an eraser and just kind of wipe everything Jedi off the map. Um, I would love... Just like thinking about the outer world, but it's in Star Wars, like a small scale RPG like that, um, RP- like that sort of game where you, there's only a select amount of planets. You know, there's not too many, but there's a few to explore. A couple, uh, good ones to to jump around in. You've got this concise narrative. Uh, you can have RPG elements, but obviously, I, f- I but I feel like it just makes life easier if you just have a canon ending. But in between, you can have like RPG elements or whatever and these sorts of things. But I'd lo- I'd love something like that. Not a Jedi, not a bounty hunter, just a person. So you know what you're saying a is story. you just want Obsidian or Bethesda to make one. No, I want Obsidian to make one. Obsidian. <laughs> 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 Let me clarify. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, hear me out, guys. Hear me out. This is a bit of an out there desire. I want a real time strategy game hmm. where I'm playing as Emperor Palpatine out in my Sith world, and I am managing how I build my battalions of Star Destroyers. You I just don't enter anything. cheat code after cheat code after cheat code. I don't. I don't play. I don't attack anything the entire time. I just have to sit there working out how to build it and how to get more people there for no apparent reason. And I'll chill there with my hooded homies that I don't <laughs> know who they are or their names, and it'll be fun. And wait twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. And just wait. Yeah. And and also at the same time, I will be putting on funny voices to pretend to be Snow in Darth <laughs> Vader. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for this eight hour period fuck with ben solo aha you've chosen the right option <laughs> i don't think that's i think my game has a higher chance of being made than yours i think so i think so that's <laughs> yeah. fine that's fine but From you know we all honest. we all have hopes and dreams yeah we do like pod racing vr uh fuck it, that i mean what it'll make me sick but it'll be fun uh any <laughs> other <laughs> ash you got Anything to add to this? Maybe like something like mafia style, like with the huts or something. Like you just fuck you just yeah, get, join the crime syndicate and like do crime stuff. Do the crime like syndicate. Do, do, crime do the crime stuff. things, <laughs> and then you can Maybe. go do the crimes. Throw, you can chuck people into Sarlacc pits. It'd be great, great time. Maybe you could play as a hut. You know, do Maybe. a Telltale Star game where you're playing as Jabba the Hut. You know, you just yeah. <laughs> I've pitched a Jabba Hutt movie. Waka, Jappy, ho, ho, ho. The Hutts, except it's Sopranos. <laughs> that's, you know, that, just there's going no to way the ending of that could disappoint. Psych every week. <laughs> no. Maybe like a like a smugglers game. Where you just smuggle stuff from planet to planet, avoiding the Empire. I mean, a Han Solo th- That game. could be my game, really. Yeah. Hmm. Mm, that could be. I think it would be nice to play an RPG where you get to select what kind of character you are. Like if you're a smuggler, or if you're a bounty hunter, or if you're yeah, like um, random uh, citizen old number twenty. Star Wars Old Republic. All right, like that. Don't know about After that. we've managed to tie it all back to the end, I think that's good to, to the start. That's a good point. Then, so thank you for joining us on the couch this week. Make sure you check out explosionnetwork.com for all our other shows, reviews, including the journey to the Savage Planet, of course, uh, news articles and much more um i will say it now so it commits kieran to having to finish it we're going to have a legends of rune terror uh <laughs> guide thing up sometime <laughs> in the near future um he started working on it i started helping him with it so now that i've said it he has to finish it good no, job. no i have to finish it thanks Dill. good job me thanks, bro. good job me thank yeah. you thank you uh, yep. it's it's called like positive Reinforcement. It's called. It's called. I was stood on a cliff looking <laughs> at the. <laughs> stood on a cliff looking at the beautiful views, <laughs> and you came off and yelled, "This is Sparta!" And like, this is Demacia. Sorry, is we correct? And kicked me off the cliff. Thanks, man. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but uh, you that's can review exactly Arcade Couch on Apple Podcasts or Podchase to help out the show, or simply review the episode on social media, share it with us, and then your your friends, do all those things. You can follow Explosion Network on Twitter at Explosion Pod. You can join our Discord at explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. You can help out the show by going to ko slash explosion. 
Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at Vivaldil, V I V A L A D I L. You can follow Karen on Twitter at Ya Boy Ringo. And you can follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobley, A S H L E Y H O B L E Y. And we will see you here next week. Same time, same couch. What about a Star Wars game where you play a scientist researching midichlorians? No, 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 no. Hear me out, hear me out. Palpatine dating sim. Ah, oh, that, yeah. And then you're like a visual out. novel, yeah. Yeah, visual you novel, to, you, work, you have to work out. You get a bunch of different Susudas. Is it going to be the, like, beefy bounty huntress strong type? Or is it just going to be some airy fairy waitress? Maybe that's the point of Captain Phasma.